So it is in fact Friday, last Friday, it's not Tuesday. Why am I recording this on Friday? Well, because I have a feeling that next Tuesday, the day that you are now actually watching this, I am going to be once again casting these secret molds that I cannot show you. So I thought we would talk about stuff that we were working on last week, namely the Puka Poi Pounder. And look, here it is in its bisque form. Uh, what does that mean? So ceramics usually goes to the kiln twice. The first time is called the bisque firing and it gets it to a state where all the organic material is burned away and it becomes hard so you can handle it without worrying about it breaking or falling apart. Now it's still porous and we keep it porous so that we can apply glaze to it. Okay, it is glazing time. So glazing time is like a little bit of a chicken and the egg situation. We're gonna be glazing the outside and we're gonna be glazing the inside. And the question is always, what do I glaze first? You have lots of things to think about. Like if you get glaze on the, if you do the outside glaze, let's say we do the outside glaze and it looks super great. And then we go to do the inside glaze. And when we're dumping the inside glaze out, maybe it like splashes on the outside glaze and ruins it. Ah, that'd be terrible, right? So maybe we just do the inside glaze first so that we can get it all perfect, dump it out, clean it up, then we do the outside glaze. But what if when we're doing the outside glaze, it messes up the inside glaze? It's a dilemma. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. I'm deciding that I think today I'm gonna do the inside first. I'm gonna do the inside first using this, and then I'm gonna do the outside using these. Glaze test number one. So close. Okay, I just did the second one and it went better than the first one. No drips on this one, no panicked drips. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna set both of these aside onto the drying shelf and maybe we will do some more time travel and I'll check back with you on Monday when I uh, attempt to glaze the outside of these. See you then. Time for some more time travel. Today's Saturday. It was supposed to be a little work day. I was just gonna make some more slip, but I realized these guys are done firing and maybe, just maybe, I can get everything glazed and fired in time to show you on Tuesday. Fingers crossed. Okay, so here is where we are at right now. These are the ones that I did yesterday. Uh, I did the insides of these. Now, it's always a chicken and an egg situation. Like I said, do you want to glaze the insides first and then do the outsides, or do the outsides first and then the insides? And the fear is always that the process of doing one surface will mess up what you've already done the other, other surface, you know. So I am going to be doing a dipping glaze for the outside. I'm going to be mixing up uh, mostly water with a little bit of underglaze in it, and then dipping the piece in it. That's how I did these. Now, I didn't learn this. I mean, I didn't invent this technique. I actually saw Turkey Mark doing this first on Instagram, and it looks great. It makes a great stone thing. And so what you do is you fill this up with water, 
with the underglaze in it, and then you dip your piece in it, and then pull it out, and it looks awesome. It looks just like stone. Now, of course, this worked great for this because the opening's on the top, so I could just, I actually put my fingers in it like that. I dipped it right to the top, took it out, looked great. Here's the dilemma. The opening is here, so if I dip this in, it's just gonna fill with the water, and I don't want it to fill with the water because um, the inside's already glazed, right? I wanna protect the inside. So that is where my balloon idea comes into play. Is it gonna work? I don't know, but we're gonna try it. Um, these, uh, hopefully, I can get away with not messing up the inside glaze, and then I have the two that I pulled out of the kiln today, and those don't have the glaze on the inside yet, so I don't have to worry if the underglaze rushes in and coats the inside. Anyway, this is all just blah, 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 technical stuff. Let's just try doing it and see what happens. Pretty good. Trying again, even darker. Also, I looked online for like an easy way to tie balloons and I clearly didn't read the instructions correctly. So I've got to practice this. <laughs> Now we're getting somewhere. The most exciting news of this morning is it seems like the little balloon trick may have actually worked. I took one out on another one and it, uh, it maintained a watertight seal. Oh yeah. So that's pretty fantastic. So this is the one that I did, the, I glazed the inside yesterday and you can see the inside hasn't been, you know, no, none of the exterior dip that we just did got into the inside. This guy's ready to go into the kiln. Alrighty, I've got two of them in the kiln and I'm gonna do a glaze firing on these right now. Now, why am I doing these in the big kiln instead of the tiny test kiln? It's because I have these uh, crazy space age kiln shelves in the big kilns that things don't stick to. So these can sit right onto the surface of this, this kiln shelf and it won't stick to it. Now this is just an underglaze on the outside, it's not an actual glaze, so hopefully it will not bond to the shelf. Now I don't have those fancy shelves in the tiny kiln, so I can't fire these in a tiny kiln. Um, yeah, so uh, tomorrow I'm going to come in and do the insides of the other two tests, unload this kiln, and hopefully it'll come out okay. It's Sunday, and even though I swore I would not do any studio work today, I could not resist peeking in the kiln because it's cool and now I can take a look. So I'm going to take a look, but we won't look at these. Well, you won't look at these until the other two are also fired. So let's just, here we go, first peeks. Okay. All right, well, I'll let you see these in a couple days. All 
Alrighty, it is 6.30 a.m. on Monday, and I have got the last two test Puka Pounders here. Just did the insides on them, and we are going to start firing them now. Hopefully everything will be ready to show you on Tuesday morning. Officially Tuesday, folks. 6 a.m. on Tiki Technical Tuesday. Let's get this kiln unloaded and see what we've got. Ooh, it's toasty. It's very toasty. Very toasty. Okay, so this is it. The big reveal, everybody. The big reveal. We have gone together, you and I, on these wonderful Tuesdays from the original clay sculpture of the Puka Pounder to Ta -da! the final glazed mug. So happy with it. So here we got the original sculpture. The first, well actually this is the second one that we dipped and I don't think it has enough coverage on it. The perfect two, these two came out great. That classic Kawhi pounder shape. Another one, the same dip. And then this was the one that we double dipped because it didn't have enough on it at first and you, I mean, it looks just like the other guys. Fantastic, I love the look of the stone. Really came out well, super happy. Gloss black interior. Signature on the bottom. Oh, I'm a happy clam. So there you have it. There is the Puka Pounder. It's kind of cool. You've seen this mug go from start to finish. Now I'm going to get official photos up of these guys onto our uh, website and, you know, various feeds today. Uh, we're looking at starting the sale uh, this weekend. I will post more info about that, including pricing, edition size. We're going to do this as a made-to-order sale. We've got all of the production molds cast up. They're ready to go. Um, since these are crazy times, we don't know how many to make. We're looking at addition size of, I believe, 250. Um, yeah, so uh, all that information will be on the website as it comes out. Uh, two extra special thank yous I want to say today. One to Eugene, Toy, and Hobby for the balloons. Um, I'm so glad you guys are open. You uh, saved the day with your curbside pickup. And also to Georgie Ceramics, my ceramic material supplier. Thank you so much for staying open and doing the curbside pickup. Um, it keeps us going, and I don't know what we would be doing if we uh, couldn't keep going right now. Uh, being able to make things uh, just, keeps, just keeps us um, together, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, final thoughts. Um, if anybody has any tips or hints on how to easily tie a balloon or tie one and then untie one so I don't have to pop it every time I glaze one of these, that would be fantastic. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe. And if you're watching this on Instagram, you can also watch them on YouTube, and then you can subscribe. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next week.